Hey guys, just a quick one uh, today. My uh, lab power supply um, has a uh, switch mode power supply, has a multi turn pot to adjust the voltage um, and the contact, and it's getting a bit dicky. Um, it will, um, the, the output will become very unstable as it's unable to determine where the, um, the, the pot is set to. Uh, I've already cleaned it once and it didn't take long to start playing up again so I'll, I'll rip it apart and see if there's a, a more permanent um, or long-term fix I can I can do to it or or perhaps even replace the pot altogether it's it's obviously a cheap quality one um, let's have a look and there's the guts of it Got the mains coming in here that transformer gets bloody hot. <laughs> I'm sure it's underrated for, for the application. Um, I mean, I've, I took measurements of the outputs of it um, just in case it ever fails so that I know what to get to replace it with. And I've uh, just pinned the values onto the PCB uh, beside each spot. Um, yeah, I don't like my chances of getting a, a schematic for this if it ever failed. Um, Anyway, there's the main switching transformer um, and uh, control circuitry. Looks like um, possibly output chokes. Uh, yeah, um, I might even this. There's a little board down under there. There's a little board there that uh, that has the output to the voltage um, meter. Um, so I'm, I might just tweak. The potentiometer that's on there that, that I think might be for adjusting the scale of the of the uh, it's not it's not a hundred percent it's the, the needle sits kind of in front of the actual value of output so I might just have a play with that at some point but uh, there's the multi-turn pot it's got uh, uh, three wires going to it and they just come down onto the board and to a plug nice and easy and a, a screw to get it off the front panel the first time I took this apart, um, took a while to get the figure out how to get the knob off, but the end the end of it is just a, a cap. It sits very flush against it. <laughs> then you've got a, uh, a a nut in the middle, and um, you can actually see the the, the shaft as well. Um, there's, there's a flat in the end of it, which um, well, you don't need to hold it with a screwdriver, but um, just holding the knob will stop the shaft turning as you get the nut off. There's something I didn't notice last time I took this off. Um, I think I completely removed the nut, but um, just then I noticed that it came loose uh, right away. Um, and there's a little brass section right through the center of that. And as you tighten the nut, there's it got a taper on it, and it pulls that in tighter. And um, and 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 those, they get all those sections. You see the cuts through there. They get pulled closer together and uh, grips the shaft of the. Uh, pot um, so yeah <laughs> I, uh, I think I took the nut off completely last time but uh, no need to right three screws in the end and possibly that nut there as well I remember when this uh, comes apart it's uh, it's all sprung loaded and whatnot on the inside um, and, and uh, there's a little a, a groove that the um, the wiper rides along. Um, yeah, it goes together easy enough, but uh, it's a little fiddly. And there's the uh, the centre of it. Um, there's the wiper. Oh, it's, it's, it runs along the groove. You can see the raised edge there, um, and that's uh, got a wire connected to the end connections, um, and. If we can get a good look down there, there's the resistive uh, element. It's uh, spiral wound all the way down, all the way down in there, um, till it meets the. Oh, there's the con the uh, connection at the very back, which um, which I think actually is probably the dirty the dirty part there. Um, I cleaned the wiper and that resistive winding last time. I'm not sure if I touched the back plate um, but uh, those two little contacts there 
Um, I just had my fing no, those two sticking up there. I just had my finger on uh, resting against it, and it left a couple of black spots. So it may not be the wiper and the um, winding so much as it is that end. It'll give the whole lot a clean. Well, that took a bit more fiddling than I'd expected. Um, there is a stopper on this top plate that uh, stops stops the wiper from traveling at the end of uh, line. Uh, what I should have done in hindsight is marked this top plate in relation to the case where that sits. Um, uh, so that, yeah, um, I think last time I, I did this I vaguely remember an issue with the, the voltage not winding back down to uh, minimum, which is in this model, its minimum is about 3.7 out. I can't go any lower than that, unfortunately. Um, which is why I'm actually looking at replacing this. Uh, or not replacing, but getting another one that's more user-friendly and has current limiting and whatnot. Um, but we'll connect that up and see if I've got it right. Okay. Winding it and the voltage is dropping instead of climbing. And there's the end of the wind there. There you go. Or the, st the start of it, I should say. Sorry, it jumped noticeably up to about 3.6. That's where the zero point should be. So, wind that back to the stop. And uh, what I'll do is I'll find my screwdriver. I'll uh, loosen the screws on the top here and just. Oh, turn the whole thing and uh, um, and zero it that way. Right, so I'm holding the uh, top plate together so I can rotate it. Um, it doesn't all spring out, and as I rotate that around, we get the effect, the dropping effect. And as soon as it starts to climb. I should be able to, there we go, now I just need to line up the screw holes with uh, the nearest, that will give me my lowest, there we are, that will give me my lowest point, I don't want to go, can't go back any further, otherwise I won't be able to wind it up to full scale which is 30 volts on this one, so we'll screw it up there and try that. Alright, I'm going to see if I can get the needle to sit um, more accurately on the scale. Um, I've got it hooked up to my, it's not a brand name multimeter, but it's a hundred and something dollar meter. Um, and uh, it's currently set at about 3.6 volts. Compared to the uh, scope, which um, is actually reading, it's a bit hard to see the divisions there, but slightly higher, it's reading closer to 3.8. Uh, hang on, I'll just, uh, that'll be white, <laughs> get the uh, zero, it does, as it warms up, uh, the line floats up the screen. Um, there we are, Slight, slightly shy of 2.6 on the scope now. Um, once it settles, it seems to be fairly accurate. I should really get in there and do something about that. Um, anyway, let's uh, wind it up to... What have we got there? Uh, let's go up to say 10. Oh, I'll check out that one there. And she's going up nice and smooth. There's no uh, switching noise from the unit. And the output's not jumping around as it was. Almost. There we go. Uh, it's a lot easier to tune uh, the higher voltages as well. Look at that. Let's get it just as it switches over. <laughs> it's got to be close. And if we have a look down here, it's sitting under 10. I would like that to be sitting on right on 10. So that I don't have to get the meter and check it all the time when I want to try and be accurate. But, uh, near, near enough to accurate and powering various things. So 
Uh, let's just get in there with the old screwing stick and see if it pot does adjust it like my theory. My theory suggests it might. I'm going to slide off the damn thing. Oh, no. No. There we are, it does seem to be turning. Here we go. Oh yeah, that's fairly close. Let's just check, it hasn't affected the output and it was just scale calibration. Look at that, still down on 10. Marvellous. And just because it's plugged into the scope, let's have a look at that too. Let's bring it down somewhere I can see it. There we go, and we're at uh, 5 volts per division, and of course it's sitting up high, pain in the bum. Let's take that off, put it back on zero, oh, there we go, sorry, I really should have a tripod or something, and clip that back on, 10, marvellous, okay, right, I'll tip it over and make sure I think gravity's not going to do anything it's um, held by magnetic force so yes I mean you can rock it and it'll float around but she'll come back well no that's uh, <laughs> up at 20 volts output and it's shot over the 20 mark there so it's pathetically non-linear um, so I think I'll just set it for most commonly used like 12 volts for example because it's nice to hit 12 volts when you need it and uh, and we'll uh, set it for that bloody gravity huh so that did I tipped it up the right way and she was um, ahead of herself so uh, let's see what effect that has then here we are there's 10 volts 10 volts out, she's bang on. Let's wind her up to 20 and see if it's made much difference there. Uh, it's about 20, and oh yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, there's 20 out there. It's a little ahead of itself, but at least we come back down to where we, where we want to be. 12, that's, that's, that's 12. On the money, and I think 10 was pretty pretty close as well. I can live with that. And if we come down to something, say like uh, five, uh, uh, two, four, six, five. Near enough. 5.068. Not going to grizzle with that. All right, done.